Доброе время суток. Я хотел выразить заболезнование в связи с смертью Александра Сахарченко. Для меня он всегда был, но он был настоящим героем. Всегда вел себя достойный, спокойный и вежливый. Даже под огнем. Глубокое соболезнование всех от меня он не будет хватать. Пора закончить. Давно пора закончить. Это нацистский, фашистский прогулка который уже почти пять лет идет в Киеве. Соболезнование всех в Донбассе и я всегда с вами. Спасибо. This report is for my English listeners because I'm sure you will not be hearing about this in the Western media. As you may or may not have heard, the leader of the Donetsk People's Republic has been assassinated. The assassination of Alexander Sakharchenko, the leader of the Donetsk People's Republic, August 31st, 2018, 2230. The leader of the Donetsk People's Republic has been assassinated in what the Russian Investigative Committee is officially classifying as an act of international terrorism. To once again clarify for the Western reader or listener or viewer, Alexander Sakharchenko was the leader of the Donetsk People's Republic and Western headlines calling him the pro-Russian or separatist leader are complete fabrications and in this writer, author or announcer's opinion, criminally libelous. The United States and the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States of America installed brutal, ignorant Nazi thugs in power in the Ukraine with the stated and proven intention of cleansing Ukraine of the Russian-speaking population and those the Nazis consider to be Russians, although factually, scientifically, and genetically Ukrainians and Russians are one and the same people. These fascist forces have slaughtered over 11,000 of their own countrymen, women, and children. And in the fratricidal civil war, where the Ukrainian army is killing civilians in order to clear territory for the West, the Donetsk forces are the last hope, and the only hope, and the only defense of the civilian population. There is no, again, Russian occupation or presence in Donbass. Zaharchenko was a brave and courageous leader, loved by the people, and will be sorely missed, and always remembered for his humility, his quiet politeness, his heroic deeds, and his historic bravery. Svetlana Petrenko from the Russian Investigative Committee has stated that the criminal case has been opened against the perpetrators under Part 3, Article 361 of the Russian Criminal Code under an act of international terrorism resulting in the loss of life.
and she stated that Article 361 was brought in under the anti-terrorism legislation known as the Yarova Package, a bill that was passed after the start of the Ukraine crisis and which increases the penalties for acts of terrorism and crimes related to the carrying out of terrorist acts and strives to bring Russian law into line with international standards and norms with regards to international terrorism. Petrenko also said that this act was also directed at Russia, the terrorist act, and the assassination of Alexander Sosharkenko due to the fact that it falls within the sphere of Russia's actions in fighting terrorism. Just for the Jortu readers, I might add that it was the Yadava package, if you recall, that caused a huge reaction from Edward Snowden when on the day of its passing he said it was a black day for Russia and bash President Putin. Being as the Yarova package is an anti-terrorism legal framework, it seemed odd at the time, but now, knowing that it is the CIA behind 89% of the world's terrorism, Russia, having sharp tools to cut out the cancer of terrorism, would of course be something the CIA would not like, as neither would their agent, Mr. Snowden. Trenko said that the Russian Investigative Committee will actively assist the law enforcement authorities of the DNR with their investigation. Alexander Saharchenko was killed in an orchestrated explosion at a cafe called Sepper in the center of Donetsk after having appeared on local and Russian television earlier in the day and announcing three days of mourning for the popular Russian and Soviet singer Joseph Kabzon, who died yesterday. According to preliminary reports, Zaharchenko was the only fatality, but the head of the finance ministry of the DNR, Alexander Tomofeyev, was also injured, as well as a yet unidentified young lady. Actually, now Interfax has reported there are approximately 11 fatalities. Currently, all entrances and exits into Donetsk have been closed, and all traffic in and out of the city has been stopped, with an emergency situation announced in the city and armored vehicles and military hardware patrolling the streets. Reports say there have already been several Ukrainian provocateurs and diversionary forces arrested, as well as those who aided in the attack. Many of those arrested have already, um, they've already said that they were working for Kiev and confessed to their connections to the Kiev junta. Investigators have also stated that Saharchenko's own bodyguards are suspected of having played a role in the terrorist act. One key piece of evidence in this is that the bomb was placed inside of the cafe. Saharchenko was not just a military commander, he was the head of the Donetsk People's Republic, in fact its presidents, so this should be classified in the media for what it was, the assassination of a head of state. Many politicians, including the chairman of the Russian State Duma, Duma are saying that this act cancels out the Minsk agreements as it is clear that it is the Kiev regime behind the assassination. In this regard, Maria Zakharova, the spokesperson for the Russian Foreign Ministry, issued a statement saying that the ministry was certain it was the Kiev regime that stood behind the act. In related news, military operations are underway and all forces have been activated in the neighboring Lugansk People's Republic. All forces are on high alert. The head of the Russian state, President Vladimir Putin, sent his deepest sympathies in regard to the tragedy, stating the following, and I quote, Alexander Vladimirovich was a true people's leader, a brave and resolute person, a patriot of the Donbass, in a difficult time for his native land, he rose up in its defense, 
took on a huge personal responsibility and led his people. The vile murder of Alexander Saharchenko is more evidence that those who chose the path of terror, violence, and intimidation do not want to seek a peaceful political solution to the conflict and do not want to conduct a real dialogue with the inhabitants of the southeast. They have made a dangerous bet on destabilizing the situation in order to bring the Donbass people to their knees. This will not happen. I am certain, said President Vladimir Putin, and I quote, that the organizers and perpetrators of this crime will receive the punishment they deserve. I would like once again to express my condolences to the families and friends of Alexander Soharchenko and all the residents of Donbass. Russia will always be with you, unquote, said President Vladimir Putin. Denis Pushilin has stated, for his part, that the DNR must get revenge for the assassination of Soharchenko, and there are many others calling for swift and decisive actions to be taken against the perpetrators in Kiev. There will most likely be a very serious escalation to the conflict, and I would like to finish by underlining a couple of very interesting and serious points that have been overlooked or and not stated regarding the Russian Investigative Committee's classification of this as an international terrorist act that directly affects Russia. That was the wording. One is that calling it international, it recognizes that the DNR and Kiev are separate entities. It also points to the fact that the investigative committee, committee most likely, now this is uh, speculation, uh, may have evidence of CIA, MI6, or other foreign hands whose fingerprints are all over this assassination. The wording of the official statement that this falls within Russia's sphere in its fight against terrorism leaves a very wide and open legal reason and platform and framework for Russia to finally fully enter the conflict and put an end to the orgy of death and theft and murder and slaughter that the Nazi junta in Kiev have been rampaging on for almost five years now. I'll be adding more information as this report continues on the website at www.jar2.com. And that's it for me. Thank you for very much for watching or listening or reading wherever you may be.